I'm at a gypsy. All right, boys, let's crack a. Uh, well, you've I'm already, already yeah, it, sorry. Way, way ahead of his. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun, eh? Bloody second quarterly review. Already. Can you, can you believe it? In person, too. Yeah, yeah I know, welcome yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're about to go again. <laughs> I, really, I really appreciate the invite. Yeah. Uh, so, a bit bits happened, fair bit to, to talk about. A uh, bit less drama for you, which is which yeah, is nice. Good. Yeah, just last some, time wasn't good. Just some good old fashioned bar banging that, <laughs> that that you've been doing this year. But we'll go to to B Fiend first, mate. First poll in Melbourne, youngest to do it. You sort of you like entering the youngest to win this, youngest to do <laughs> like you're you're kind of entering that that territory. So how was that experience? Oz GP putting it on poll, youngest dude to do it. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I was thinking about this on the way here. Like when we did the first one, we'd only done one race, but now second report, I suppose we've done another four, four or five, I think. But yeah. Uh, yeah, cool, cool to get my first pole at AGP. I felt like we'd been so close so many times, so uh, finally pulled it off. Um, and then to convert to a, a win was pretty cool, but a cool weekend to do it. Like obviously every weekend's cool when you can get a good result, but to do it at the Grand Prix was pretty special. Yeah, and it's such a such a crazy vibe there, and obviously Melbourne's just crazy for sport in yeah. general. But then I think that with uh, like, I mean, dude, AGP was where the whole COVID thing happened. Yeah, like that right. literally yeah, was like the I was off. there, and it was like the first <laughs> domino in the world. And then after that, all hell broke loose. So I think there almost felt like something a bit more special around the Oz GP this time around. It's like the it's like the fans really appreciate what they got there, you know. It was pretty feral though at some point. It's like the lines <laughs> for the toilets and oh, it, was just, it, was chaos. it was insane the amount of people like. How many did they get through the gates? Do you remember? Oh, it was like 400, isn't yeah. it, for the weekend? That Sunday was ridiculous. Like I've never seen so many people in one late yeah. place it felt like and back of the pits, all the support paddock. It was, it was pretty cool to see, but it was full on. Did it translate to like energy on the on the racetrack in a sense you know like when you really feel like the vibe of the crowd like were, were you guys going feral too well that sunday race yeah like it was packed everywhere so yeah. and i think we put on a reasonable show i guess yeah, yeah. No, i'm pretty sure i'm pretty short, short ones, ones for us oh for yeah the a couple Prix. of races were bad we, yeah. we got bumped down the order quite a bit yeah. um but yeah it's still such a cool experience i mean racing there and and even on sunday's race we're quite early in the morning but when you're racing you don't notice too much but on your warm-up and cool down lap the place was packed That's and so i sick. think we were on at like nine o'clock in the morning and yeah there's hundreds thousand people there it's it's pretty epic yeah and so as a pole sitter now as someone that's done it how gnarly is it to do the perfect lap in a v8 supercar when you've got like this dude and all the other dudes that can just lay down a heater like is it a crazy focus and intensity that goes into that um, it is. I, d I don't know if I've done a perfect lap yet. Okay. <laughs> and I, I think in these these cars at the moment, it's very hard to do a perfect lap. I feel like everyone's maybe not made a little mistake, but doesn't have the perfect thing going on. So for that qualifying session, we we're on wets in the session before. And it was at that point of when you put a slick on. Mm. And we I, th we I think we both put slicks on, but both missed our laps at the end because of a red flag. And um yeah, we took a bit of a risk in that qualifying session and, and pitted for another set and the track had just dried up in time. So it's a cool, f it's a great feeling. I mean, when you do get pole and, and you're starting up front, um, obviously you've you've done the fastest lap of the rest, but yeah, I don't know if I've done a perfect lap yet, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Have you ever done it like a just chef's kiss, perfect uh, lap for a, for a pole? Yeah, I've done probably a few like, good ones, but... There's probably always something in it. I so, guess, there's, so there's never like a perfect lap, you reckon? I don't know. How do you answer it? You know, like, it's hard yeah. to know. Yeah. 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 I've done a few good ones where you think, oh, that's good. And then <laughs> someone's beaten you. Yeah. So, yeah. Hard to know. Yeah. Because it, it would be like, it'd be interesting to know if like you actually could have got another tenth or a couple tenths out of yeah. something or if it's like that was just it. Yeah, you have a lot in races, like when you're in a rhythm, you can be like 10th for 10th every lap and be so in tune with everything, but over one lap, it's pretty hard to do it. But in a race, yeah, you can be in like a full rhythm and yeah. feel everything in the car and manage everything and be doing the same 10th every lap is pretty cool. Yeah. I even notice like when I'm 
train and then I'll, I'll put the stopwatch on the bars and the moto and I'm like righto that if you've done like five lap warm up and you're like all right I'm feeling sweet and then as soon as you press that timer you overshoot the first turn <laughs> save, saving it overshoot the next one over. so is yeah. that kind of what you're like trying to not do in a sense when you've like crossed that line for a for a pole lap yeah I, I try not to overthink it and just yeah full send i guess and it's normally good if you got someone in front of you you see where they break you try and go that little bit later or yeah. take a bit more curve or whatever so yeah you're always trying to compare to someone as well yeah so you've uh you've had a few good results this year a bunch of podiums a bunch of wins what are you doing with the trophies are you like slowly building out a cabinet or like what's the what, have you got a plan at the moment <laughs> Well, I don't actually keep them. The team keep our trophies. Oh, really? Oh, they do have the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, um, yeah, we can get replicas. I haven't ordered any yet, but I do plan on it. But, um, yeah, we got a couple of didgeridoos on the weekend. So, yeah. uh, that, that was cool. Something different. But, uh, yeah, they're sitting up at work at the moment. <laughs> so, no no full man cave going yet? Well, I do. Like the- I feel like I got a good man cave, but it's just, I suppose, all my go-kart and Super 2 and Super 3 trophies. But, uh I got my trophies from last year. I got all the replicas made and yeah. I planned on doing it at the start of the year, getting them made. But um, yeah, you sort of go to order one and go, oh, that's that's pretty expensive. And then you get a few more and it's like, damn, that's going to cost me a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, have you got like the full cabinet going no, on? No, I don't like trophies, but dad, really dad has them all. He oh, gets all yeah. the replicas. The only ones I got are the surfboards. So yeah, thankfully okay. got a few of them. They're all in my garage, but the other ones, I don't need them. I was there. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That's the most SBG answer of all time. Yeah. So uh, the races that I've seen this year, there's actually been some pretty epic, like full just bar banging going on. Like you and Kostecki in, in Perth yeah. was was pretty the sick. Perth like, one was good. Yeah, that was. I actually don't know that I've seen racing that was that aggressive but clean at the same like aggressive but not impacting the racing you know what i mean like you're not putting a dude off he's not losing time it's yeah. just you guys are going that fight for the win yeah yeah i thought it was good and then afterwards they thought it was good and then all of a sudden it was being protested and oh really ever, yeah ever since then it's been a bit weird with everyone but it was an awesome race at the time and even if it came second in that one it would have been a good battle so it was the best race in years and then it turned into a shitstorm. So God, that's annoying. Weird. Yeah, it sucks. But it's you, what it is. you watch that though. And I mean, from my uneducated, not an official whatever, yeah. but there was two dudes like those gas pedals were completely <laughs> yeah, on the yeah. floor, both dudes. And it was like, there was nothing in each of those cars, you know, and it was like, you were getting the most out of them and just touching, you know, yeah, the, the whole yeah. time. That to me, like that was vintage supercars, right? Yeah. There. And then like, he was doing the same, like it looked like I was bumping into him, but he was braking or not getting on the throttle as a strategy for me to not be able to like do a crossover or, or whatever. And it made for good racing, but then, yeah, I don't know. Do you reckon that though, is it just the cars are super close? Like in, at the moment, yeah. like there's just not like the the uh separation or yeah there's not enough differences between the cars so when you look like you can see underneath everyone's suspension and stuff and we've all got the same parts yeah you see pretty much everyone's running similar stuff which is awesome in qualifying but in the race it's near impossible to pass you know last year even you could see differences between the car like if you saw a dick johnson car or a fpr car the way they moved and Mm. turned was very different uh, the overall speed was the same, but the way they achieved it was different. Yeah. Now pretty much all the cars look the same, mm. which is cool for competitiveness, but maybe the racing suffered by it. But yeah, Darwin on the weekend was so hard. Like it's mm. the hardest <laughs> racing I've ever had. You couldn't couldn't follow anyone. So. And, and what was that? That it was just no difference in like yeah, well, car the, speed or, something, or like not ca- necessarily speed, but where you could make time. You weren't yeah, like, okay, I could get this guy here because this car is set yeah, up for like this. The whole field was within four tenths. Like oh, it was nuts, well, the top man. 20, like it was awesome. But then in the race, everyone's just doing the same thing. Your tires heat up and you just follow. So yeah. So what's it's the good f- and bad. What's the fix for that? Do you think? I, I don't know the answer. Yeah. Maybe a better tire, maybe allowing a bit more freedoms with the car and stuff. But yeah, at the moment, even though there is a lot of parody talk, the cars are closer than last year, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you seem to come alive on Sundays. <laughs> so <laughs> 
What are you doing on Sunday morning, bro? <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, yeah. What, yeah. what's no, going I gotta, on Sunday? Gotta keep the secret. Um, I don't know. Just another day at the track, but it's weird. I mean, like, I, I suppose when I do look at it, you, you know, you get the Friday and the Saturday and you learn off the race and just come back and we're better than the day before. You can put yeah. it down to that. But thankfully, we got a podium on the Saturday at Darwin on the weekend, which was good and, and had a good Sunday again. But it's funny now because, like, after maybe after the Grand Prix or I think after my win in Perth, it was like, oh, I've only won on Sundays. And yeah. then you rock up in Tassie on Sunday and everyone's like, oh, you're ready for Sunday. And I won. Yeah. And then I did it again at Darwin. So, <laughs> I don't know. I hope I can keep it going. So, you think it's just a fact that because you're still super early into your yeah. career, you know, and I think that it's funny, like just the way that you carry, you're almost like an old soul, you know, like the way that you carry yourself and like your level of professionalism. And it's like pretty crazy on my end, like from the outside looking in the way that like a young dude like that can just slot into a team. And it's almost like part of the furniture being here forever. But there is this process of, like you said, new car, new track, you're there Friday learning yeah. then Saturday. And it's, so do you think it's kind of just a culmination of like how you guys are working on, your setup for the weekend it sort of just blooms on sundays i th- i think so i mean like it's a big thing that we got to improve on like as much as it's sort of like a running joke sort of thing like i do want to win on Saturday. you know race. what i mean like you also <laughs> yeah. need to get good points on saturday but i mean you know just going back a year like rocking up now i feel super comfortable rocking up to tracks that i've been to and and that's a massive progression but still like i race on a saturday and you follow guys and you learn so much stuff off them and and um yeah thankfully on the weekend in darwin we rolled out super strong we were quickest in first practice and that rolled over to a podium on saturday which was good but you just got that extra experience and obviously we're learning and and getting better and and with these new cars we've got so much to learn i mean they're they're very interesting and we're learning so much as the weekend goes on so i feel like as a team as drivers we're probably getting on top of it more but so is everyone else so yeah um don't honestly don't know what the answer is but um yeah hopefully we can keep it up yeah don't know don't care yeah, <laughs> let's just yeah keep, don't let's, overthink it <laughs> yeah let's just keep doing it have you learned a lot more about the car since we last spoke because it was pretty early stages yeah. then yeah pretty early and it's just constant development like trying stuff and we had a test day a few weeks ago before darwin and finally got to try some stuff that was sort of out of our normal box at a race weekend it's pretty risky to try stuff yeah. like that so yeah i think we're we're constantly learning and evolving like the cars are very different now from the start of the year and yeah we keep going down a certain trend and then there's another tweak of the week and you're sort of going down that path so yeah it's constantly evolving i'm sure it's like fun to do in one way because you're kind of like getting to see what the cars do but <laughs> being on a race yeah. you're probably like i would way rather we didn't do this here <laughs> yeah but it's good to see like you're always trying stuff and then the engineers are coming up with this thing and um yeah you jump in see what it feels like and tell them if it's better or not and yeah it'd be interesting to go back to what we started with at mm. the start of the year set up yeah. and see if we have come far how like i guess what's different like obviously you can't say too much but like what stuff yep. can you like kind of playing with is it stuff that you expected would make the differences yeah, that like it has it's, or it's standard stuff that gets changed over time it's pretty standard like it's just your roll bars and springs and stuff it's all race car stuff that you always play with and tune and there's no parts like there's nothing to develop with parts so you just it's all a combination of setup mm. like the cambers the roll bars and springs all trying to get the most grip at all parts of the corner so yeah it's just you're just playing with setup basically yeah and uh there was the the tazzy crash that was pretty big pretty big yeah it was big inside yeah wasn't can you believe the team turned that car around yeah yeah i can because of who they are yeah (laughs) Yeah. and we take a welder now on races so that was good (laughs) but yeah like seeing where it came in and um like that was a massive crash inside. I only hit the wall at 80 or 70 or something. It wasn't big, but it was violent. Like I almost hit the steering wheel. And really? Then, yeah, I didn't expect that. And then come inside, there's bars hanging off. There's broken bits off the chassis. And yeah, they bolted it together and it felt pretty funky. But I guess it turned better left than right, luckily, because it's all left <laughs> at Tassie yeah. and seemed okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that crash was wild because there's not a lot of crashes where 
like you'll see a car go into the barriers and just and then stop. just come straight out. Like yeah, yeah your most cars they like go in and they slow down and stop. And you went doing yeah, and like literally bounced off the wall. You don't see that a lot. Well, it's got earth filled tires there. Like it's pretty old school type of thing. So most tracks no are gone gravel to, trap too. N- not at that part of the corner. You normally don't go off there. But most tracks are gone to like a concrete wall or a normal tire wall. But that's proper old school. So. It hurt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah, physically, are they is that like a pretty big hit to take? Yeah, so there's a bit going on at the moment with the cars to try and make them crash a bit better, I guess. So James Courtney had a big crash at Newcastle head on and the thing didn't soak it up that well and burnt, uh, bent quite a bit. So yeah, there's a few things going on to try and make the cars a bit safer. Yeah, because I guess you don't really think about that, eh? Like there's probably some cars that crash better than others yeah and like as the generations of cars go on yep. like with the old what what's the difference between like the old car and the new car well this one has it's not a one-piece chassis so it has like clips we call them on the front and the rear where it bolts to the main part of the chassis the front clip and then all the engine bolts around that at the front all the suspension bolts to that so it's designed for that to be the crumple zone yeah and not affect the chassis and then yeah. you just take the clip off and put it back on so but surprisingly on my car the clip was fine but the main chassis was stuff so <laughs> it just it, bent the show yeah it didn't really soak it up that well so and they have the exact same problem in nascar like all those drivers are getting concussed and yeah the, their impacts are not that great so i saw on youtube actually on nascar they've come out and updated their clip they've cut all holes in the front clip to make it compress so um i'm sure there'll be stuff like that here soon yeah 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 and did you feel any effects like concussion wise or anything like no that? it just hurt my collarbone again so oh. it was on my bad collarbone and it was pretty tight but does it, some physio does it still give you a drama yeah when it's cold yeah yeah okay yeah. but otherwise it's fine yeah that's was a yeah it was definitely that was like a, a weird place to obviously you got had a bit of help but, yeah. but like a weird weird place to go off and like a yeah oddly big shunt yeah, and like we've seen it a few times this year. You touch someone wheel to wheel and it just rips the wheel out of your hand. So I think Dave touched me and then it ripped the wheel out and then that made it worse. Uh, and then I went on to the grass and couldn't stop. So yeah, yeah it's wheel to wheel contact sometimes is pretty tough. Yeah, and is and that's different this year, do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems to be worse. It's it's just, it. I mean, it's it's fascinating that you can have such a big, difference in yep. i mean from the outside you know, they look really similar but you know yeah there's a lot of different just a completely different things about the car yeah completely mm. different have you had a big crash in one yet no let's not do that then. no <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let, let's keep let's keep that shit yeah. going straight yeah yeah <laughs> uh so in between as well since we've done the last one you have gone over to thailand to do yeah. some gt racing what's uh what's that experience like because i mean honestly it looks pretty sick yeah, it's pretty nuts. So went over for a test, uh, Bury Run, where they race MotoGP. So for me, I'm just a fan going to the tracks because all the ones I watch, so we race at pretty much MotoGP and F1 tracks for the whole season. And uh, to go drive there, I think it's certainly more a motorbike track than it is a car track. There's lots of runoff, so it's pretty easy to take the piss on track limits and that, which tightens up on race weekend. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, nah, it's really cool. And it's such a big series this year. Like, it's a pro am championship so there's a professional and an amateur the pros are all factory drivers so even our teammate uh racing with us lucas stoltz uh, is a mercedes factory driver and yeah won the 12 hour the last couple of years so like it's pretty stacked this year which is cool um i missed the round on the weekend though so they raced in fuji on the weekend so i missed that one but yeah back over in in a few weeks time for a double header so it's can oh, it's it's awesome it's great experience and racing you know the best gt guys in the world uh is is pretty cool so just for i don't know i just feel like a bloke that drives cars in others and then you sort of open up to the rest of the world yeah how does the like the i guess how are you stacking up against those guys and are you sort of are you even measuring yourself against those dudes obviously like the cars are fairly different you know like because it's such big yeah. differences in brands but is there any info like you can take out of it personally as like to where you kind of stack up um i suppose so but it's that's not real the goal in that championship like it's not about me at the end of the day it's you know you got two drivers and and um 
yeah, it's a big team effort. So it's not just how how I go. Uh, it's about making sure the am on their side, you get them up to speed. And to be honest, that's my biggest job is trying to help those guys, you know, be as quick as they can. So, you know, we we have our qualifying session, us pros, and I suppose that's our time where we try and lay a heater down and, and see where we stack up. But um, it's it's really cool for me and just, you know, getting to race guys that race in Europe and Luca, my teammate over there, does 27 races a year, like race weekends, and each one of those is in the exact same car. So he races in heaps of championships, but all in a Mercedes GT3. For me, I'd do it probably four or five times a year and then race a supercar another 12 times. So yeah. it's pretty pretty crazy to see the differences, but uh, it's it's great experience for me. I feel like that's been a big step forward for me in driving different stuff and, and yeah. racing top top guys yeah i mean it'd have to make a massive difference to be thrown into like you're you're used to this car over yeah. here and it's got these characteristics and then you go do something complete like they're on the other side like you're driving on the yeah. other side of the car like that overall like you just have to think that that would be developing like car skill big game time again like you're getting more almost like more gate drops you know yeah that's literally what it is for me and um it's funny like this year the cars the supercar last year and the gt car were i suppose getting more similar and similar over time but this year they've just taken all the downforce off the supercar so it's actually like a bigger gap to do both which in a way is good because there's no real overlap but um it's cool like, i rock up and i look at the other guy's data and it's still stuff that we work on in a supercar. You're just doing it with ABS and traction control and a bit of different stuff. But just the feeling of going out for qualifying and race starts and, and racing guys and helping other people improve is a massive thing as well. So it's cool. I feel like that's been a big step forward for me in, in racing that. And I love it at the same time, like driving cool cars or, and the sickest tracks in the world. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. How hard is it to go from one side of the car to the other and on a racing context? Oh, I don't really notice it that much. Really? It's, you do it Bathurst a Bathurst little bit. Bathurst is the one, yeah. yeah. Cause, okay. Because you're so in tune with that at the 12 hour or the 1000, mm. all your reference points at like the cutting, you got the whole car on the other side. Yeah. So on those tight corners where you got the walls and you do, do it on the same track, it's quite difficult. Yeah. But if you go to a completely different track, you don't it notice make it. A difference. Uh. It's when you got all those muscle memory and yeah. brake markers and stuff same car but you're on the other side of the track it's quite different so do you like when you're trying to get used to a new car so like let's say when brock goes like let's say if brock well you do drive that at bathurst but like are, have you got reference like visual references in the car as to like this is the edge of the car or like this is my limits or is it all feel it's all feel like you you've obviously done as much study as you can beforehand with placement and brake markers and stuff but you sort of build up on the corners with no walls i guess you yeah. use the curbs you can kind of feel when you hit a curb or get close to the exit curbs and stuff and then you build up to the corners with walls but you kind of get cues from the curbs to start with yeah, yeah. And, and so is there any crossover like so you're you do rally you do the like the dirt oval stuff about to drive a nascar like mm -hmm. is there any like can you take something from everything and apply it back to not i guess not yeah. just a supercar but it's like if i went and rode a flat track bike i'd i'd probably bring something back to like a flat turn yeah. on a like i guess it's bike. it's just all adding to the experience and mm. i'm for sure it makes you a better driver but yeah, you get to experience different cars different teams and people the way that they work you might pick some setup stuff up but yeah it just adds to the overall overall um experience level i guess yeah yeah no it makes sense and so mm. w how far off are the ams that you're racing like you said you big part of it is like bringing those guys up to speed like how big is the difference because i can imagine that it's it's like any sport right it's like getting that last yeah five <laughs> percent is crazy hard you know like can you get a person to this level but to really dial them in to be like a professional driver it's like a quite a hard the small percentage is quite a hard leap to make yeah and i suppose that's sort of where they get to and i mean an am they're not racing the car all the time and i suppose we're lucky enough that we're driving still not that much but a couple of times a month maybe three times a month but uh 
It depends on the track. So at the first round, they're in Thailand. They're probably about a second, I would say. That's actually so not too bad. Normally eh? at a maybe a ninety second track, it'd be between one and one and a half seconds. Um, but for us, it's quite interesting when you do that because obviously we get out of the car and we're talking about hundreds and tenths. But for amateurs normally racing, it's so not easy, but it's a lot easier to make a half a second or a yeah. second jump. Yeah, like you couldn't make a half a second. No, we feel like we're pretty tapped and, you know, we might want a, a, a little bit different spring or a Miller ride height to try and gain maybe half a tenth. We'd be stoked. Yeah. But in the back of your mind, it's never really about you when you're doing those weekends. You got to make sure when you drive the car, you got to think, is the am going to be comfortable driving the car? And um, it plays a big part. And, and as I said, the the weekend it's not about us it's about getting them up to speed and helping them as a team to to try and get good results so you could actually set up the car that would suit you guys way more than the am and like so you could take away it would like let you go faster but then it would make them feel like fully uncomfortable yeah. basically yeah like we had that at the 12 hour this year our car was set up for full speed and the teammate car with the the pro-am lineup had a bit more wing a bit less aggressive setup on it to make it comfortable for for the am over the long long race you know so you got to go for speed but you also got to make it easy to drive and yeah. and so what are the changes that would make it easier to drive uh maybe a bit lower in the rear to make it a bit more stable and then i think they had two or three holes more downforce on yeah. the rear wing to yeah, keep right. it planted which for us makes it too slow on the straight yeah you so, get too much drag yeah so it's a bit more lively for us, but overall it's faster. Yeah, yeah. right. It, it's crazy to think though the how hard it would be for that AM guy to make yeah. that, well, that for our, time, for, you know, like they, to bridge that yeah. gap because it's such a small on a stopwatch. It's yeah, nothing. It's such a small amount well, of time. Well, for us with that setup, you know, Richie was within half a second or three tenths of the the main car, but for Eamon, it was probably a second or two quicker for him. Yeah, yeah, just because they're comfortable, yeah, yeah. and yeah. they feel confident to push it because the car's safe. Yeah. yeah, and so where is that time then? Like the time between the AM and you, like where is that being made? You reckon? Normally, high speed is the biggest one. So, in the GT cars, they've got ABS. So braking's never like big braking's never really an issue because yeah, you can sort of just fire it in and and get on the brakes real hard and stop it on the ABS. So. It's normally like mid-corner speed, like carrying it with confidence. And then high speeds, probably the big ones. Like, I mean, over the top of the hill at Bathurst, I think, I don't know, we're doing like 240 or something. And <laughs> yeah, that's just all nuts. You know, we're going eh? through McPhillamy Park, <laughs> lifting to like 30% throttle. Like, it's it's pretty crazy when we go over there. So, I suppose for us to, to rock up and do it all the time, it sort of feels normal. But for people who work during the week and then go and race cars on the weekend, it's... Um, obviously a bit different so that that's where all that wing stuff and ride heights and all that makes such a big difference for them where they're just comfortable doing that and for us obviously we want it on the edge so we can go faster but uh yeah you got to compromise a little bit yeah yeah and so you uh gonna you've got a big couple months coming up so yeah. there's some some rally and then some nascar you have to be fizzing yeah. to drive a NASCAR. Oh, it's been a pretty slow start to the year, I guess, racing, and now it all just ramps up. So, yeah, it's a cool opportunity going this week to NASCAR and getting to drive it, get to do an event, and, yeah, I'm pretty lucky to go straight into the main series. Normally, you go into the Xfinity series or or a couple of times at least first. So, yeah, straight in with a good team, good equipment. It's going to be pretty cool. So, how does SVG prepare for a NASCAR Yep. In, and you're only there for such a short period of time yeah so it's all sort of started this week i haven't um done too much on purpose tried to stay focused on supercars but this week yeah i've been watching as much on board as i can and i've got all the radio comms from the team of the last races they've done just oh, to see yeah. how the races run like their pits are very different from from us they they don't have a pit speed limiter for example so the way they pit they um like if a yellow comes out you can't pit you have to wait and then everyone pits together and then it's just carnage and you know they have guys you into your pit bay and there's like 40 pit bays and people are waving signs you know that's so hard to see which one's yours and then you get to yours and all of a sudden people jump out over the wall to service your car they get a jack instead of just an uh 
you know, the air jacks like we yeah. did. It's just completely different, you know. It's so, it seems so old school, but it's so refined and advanced in its own way. So, yeah, it's going to be cool to experience, see what it's like. And um, it's a new track, Street Circuit, Chicago. So no one's done that before. That should help me. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, it's not going to be easy, that's yeah. for sure. How long has it been on the bucket list for you to... I mean, you pretty much want to race everything. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like sure a, it's always been. Like but. late 2000s, early 2010s. Like I was massive NASCAR fan, but sort of died off the last few years. Um, but yeah, obviously this year I've been right into it again. Um, but yeah, loved it. And I was always a big Tony Stewart fan. And his crew chief was Darian Grubb when he won the championship. And he's going to be my crew chief next wow. week. So that's, cool. that's pretty cool. Yeah. So how did the deal come about to, to do that? Yeah, so I saw it all happen last year with Kimi Raikkonen. Yeah. And um, when you read Justin Marks, who's the team owner, when you read all what he says, like it was all about, you know, sh showing the potential of drivers from all around the world, giving them a shot, bringing them that exposure into NASCAR and getting exposure in other parts of the world yeah, for definitely. NASCAR. And um, yeah, th you always dream. and But when they got Kimi Raikkonen, it's a hard name to stack up against. But yeah. Um, yeah, tried to find a way to get in touch, and it was actually Paul Morris got in touch with Boris Sick. Ed, who came and raced supercars a few times. And yeah, he recommended me to Justin, and Justin called me and yeah, said last late last year if we can work something out next year. And he targeted this race like he thought being a street circuit it might and be good for me. Fresh. And yeah, and then early this year it worked out, and go and have a crack now it's super cool man i'm very it's, stoked for you yeah and like, like it's an awesome opportunity that's for sure yeah. and, and i think the fans too you know like the fans of the supercars it's a i think it's like a cool not like a validation but it's almost like a bit of a social proof you know like yeah. our guy our, <laughs> our guy can go to there and it sort of like elevates the <laughs> the level in a sense you know and then yeah. i guess fans of supercars get to see you do something else and then i think there's you know you do well over there and there's going to be a lot of people that are like oh this dude can this dude can really steer and what series is he from and so yeah. i think there is like quite a bit of like good cross pollination yeah and hopefully if you go okay it opens doors for everyone else as well like i know yeah brody wants to go cam waters wants to go and then whoever else if you do well it's only good for our series in this part of the world so you see what um scotty's done dixon and mclaughlin coming from this part of the world over there and willpower like and what marcus did marcus yeah. ambrose from supercars so yeah like it's possible so hopefully it starts opening doors again yeah and so have you done any sim time or you just tried not to do not much yet so yeah i've just been trying to get as much advice as i can and marcus was actually pretty helpful with oh, that sick. yeah and then next week i got all the sim stuff and prep yeah for the track wise yeah so you go when do you leave thursday yeah thursday okay night, so. and then you've got a week there before the race the following weekend yeah so i go to charlotte where the team's based yep. and then go they race next week at nashville yep. at the speedway so go and watch that learn soak it all in and i've never been to a nascar race before so <laughs> yeah and then the monday i think i get to test the car like as a safety sort of check to prove i can drive and <laughs> Dude, then, imagine being that team eh? Just yeah. be like, oh we should probably get this guy yeah. to drive this Make car sure he like, goes. at least yeah. one. Maybe that's a fail. <laughs> that's yeah. a reef in it right yeah. like, oh. and, then, and then then there's like pit stop practice and sim stuff before the week yeah 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 it's dude it's exciting like, yeah it should be cool especially i mean you've done so much in supercars the last you know 10 yep. years it's like it'll be a, probably like a cool change of pace as well yeah and the track looks crazy like it's a street circuit but not like anything we do and there's long straights and there's like a corners into t intersections or yeah. an intersection one goes one way one goes the other so there's no runoff it's just a wall at the end of the straight so it looks <laughs> looks crazy and not, and like all the 90 degree corners there's no runoff like they don't go up the next street it just turns so if you go off you're in the wall it looks not like an easy place to learn yeah, yeah. yeah. oh well yeah. i feel like you like that sort of stuff though you know you're always challenge. doing weird stuff in cars <laughs> yeah we'll see <laughs> <laughs> so then you're gonna do some more rally as well yeah so i've been doing the new zealand series uh most have conflicted that so far and i did one it didn't go very well i had a lot of car issues and then i ended up making a mistake later on trying to make up for it but yeah i got two or three more 
in New Zealand coming up and then more endurance racing over there too. So yeah, the year gets pretty busy from now. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of endurance racing, so it's finally officially announced that J-Dub is your yeah. partner. Yeah. What, was there like a long list you were going through or no, no, like, no, no, what no. was the delay? <laughs> well, I mean, it was de- always... Why does he delay it every time? I yeah, like, oh, man, yeah. I saw some funny stuff when they announced it because he was like, you know, it was a team decision and all that, which we all knew he was going to do it again. Yeah, like, yeah. It was just a thing. There was people saying like, oh, did he email himself saying congratulations and all <laughs> <Yeah>. this stuff? <laughs> but, he um, sent, no, it's, sent his own resume yeah. to himself. Yeah, I mean, he tested at Sydney at the start of the year and yeah, it was always happening or just... I think I said it in the post-race interview after Perth. I was like, I got a good co-driver and then we're like, oh, we better announce it then. Yeah, so. yeah, right. So what, what's it like uh, driving with J-Dub in these, uh, these endurance races and like... Do you feel like this year you can kind of muscle him a bit more? Like last year, you probably had to just be like, okay, whatever, Mr. Mister Wing Cup, whatever you feel like. Now you're like, no, nah, mate, it's my car, right? We'll, we'll do it my way. Well, I suppose it's quite different. You know, I did the 1000 with him last year, but this year we got two races. So the Sandown 500 and Bathurst, but... He's the king of Sandown. Yeah. yeah. Like there's one track we always went to as my teammate. Sandown, he was, he was just insane <laughs> just don't well, so, yeah. Yeah, that's if you good. want to swap for that one that's <laughs> no, good no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no richie's won there so yeah we, yeah no we, we got, got good we got good here. lineups but um <laughs> the i suppose the difference is this year is it's it is like he's coming into my car because he hasn't yeah. drove this so much so he drove it our last test day a couple of weeks back and like it's quite weird but you know when he comes in i'm like leaning in and telling him some tips of yeah, what i normally yeah. do and and what we've learned and I suppose he's trying to get his head around that, but um, no, nah, keen as like I just love working with him and going through how he operates on a race weekend, and to do it for Bathurst was awesome. But to have literally, you know, they're back to back rounds, but you got two months pretty much where we're going to be working super close together, and and with Shane and Richie as well. I suppose all of us are going to be working really close to, um, yeah, to try and get some good results and super close at the moment so it's really important to have a good co-driver and i think we've both got great ones yeah and i mean correct me if i'm wrong but there's probably a fair bit of development that can happen like in that two months where it's like two heads better than one you know like you've you've got essentially four drivers like really really class drivers that are working with yourselves engineers like you can probably get some pretty big gains in those couple months yeah, like the experience that they both have and how Jamie's so used to refine cars in Triple Eight all his years and Richie's experienced so much around the world too. So they know what a good car should feel like or if it doesn't, how to make it better. It was cool to see, you know, they hadn't driven since Eastern Creek. They drove at the test the other week and some things they were pretty impressed with, with how they improved, particularly the throttle for Richie. He was really struggling at Eastern Creek. But then there's still a long way to go with some things. So um, Richie was a bit frustrated with some of it. Like, oh, why hasn't this improved? But he's still, you know, it's not like we stopped working at it. It just hasn't <laughs> yeah, happened yeah, yet. So, yeah. yeah, it's a cool process. And, you know, I think the cars have come forward a long way since they drove them. But yeah. still more to come. Yeah, and I think it's it would have to be frustrating <clears throat> as a driver to, like, not have the car that yeah. you want or, like, see the potential. But it, it has to be a cool process to like work with the engineers work with the shop like it's like when you when you're busy at work the time goes quicker you know or it's like easy to enjoy when you're busy sometimes like if you're sitting around with nothing to do the car's perfect like easy to be complacent or get used to stuff like the steering you just go oh that's how it is and then richie gets in and goes oh why is it like that and then because you just forget about it and get used to it and just accept that that's the way it is so now you're like oh yeah we need to keep making that better because you've just accepted it i guess yeah 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 no that that makes sense and Mm. just the level of experience that j-dub has too like i'm sure like from a car point of view aside like just getting to spend time like around the energy that he brings on those weekends and in the prep like i'm sure there's probably a lot of learning that can take place when it comes to that yeah there is for sure and he's been like super open to me like about the past 18 months and really opened up and given me, you know, a lot of his personal prep and all that stuff that he goes through. But I never got to experience what he was like on a race weekend and to work with him last year was awesome. But I feel like this year we're 
we're definitely i think we'll be a lot more prepared and and a better combo this year because i've got a little bit more experience and we can bounce ideas together but it's just super cool working with him and the big one for him like he's so he's so particular with everything that he does and like last year he'd sit in my car and he's like why is that like that why is that like that why is that like that and i'm like oh i didn't really think about that yeah thankfully he sort of got in this year and i suppose i've started thinking about that and he gets in the car now and feels super comfortable so for me that's a tick i feel like we've improved on stuff like that but uh it's cool to see how he operates on a race weekend are you starting to feel more oh, like you're getting your own processes and like you're starting to trust your own uh intuition now because i mean i'm sure when you first come in you're just like yep all right like yeah, i'll do on? i'll do whatever like yeah. okay i'll move that i'll, I'll do this yeah. but does it get to the point now like you win a bunch of races like championship wise you're doing good do you start to trust yourself a little bit more and like obviously you don't want to be like you're not gonna say i'm, I'm done i'm a fucking cooked egg and i'm sweet yeah. <laughs> you know like i know everything but is there a process of like starting to trust yourself? Uh, yeah, there is for sure. But obviously we work really close with our engineers and, and they're the they're our coach really at the end of the day. You know, they're the ones that make the changes and help us improve. But I suppose like my prep has been the biggest thing and I feel like I'm at a really solid level with that. And it's quite funny now we're going back to tracks where I've been last year and I go back to my notes last year and I look how far it's come in 12 months and it's crazy. And the, I feel really prepared now when I get to events and I feel like that's what's been a big step up for me and and then working with the engineer and just understanding stuff and yeah, it's developed so much, you know, just in little things so much has developed in myself and that over the past 12 months. So obviously like I'm stoked and I love that, um, but there's so much to go. Like I'm, yeah. <laughs> I cracked over 50 races on the weekend. I started feeling old when I thought about that. But um, <laughs> the bloke next to me has got a few more and, you yeah. know, it's just a... Uh, I'm 500 next round. Yeah, too. it's crazy. Really? Yeah. But I'm still learning, so... Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, nuts. always learning something. Yeah, it's awesome. Is there a difference, like, so you more mentioned the engineering side of it and, like, working with the engineers, but how about just you mentally? Yeah. Like, mentally going to the track because... There's a difference between, and you probably speak about this, like this would be a bridge that you crossed where it's like, you're the young dude and you just don't want to step on any toes. You don't, probably don't even really know what works for you yet. Like, you know, how, how should I sleep? How should I train? What kind of mood should I aim to be in? Like, you know, you could you can be like, oh, get super hyped up, listen to heavy metal music and then just, it's not the vibe. And then it's like, okay, being relaxed or no music or, you know, so it's like, do you start to really figure out over the years, just like team aside, engineer car aside, just like what makes you show up on a race day to win? Yeah, you learn pretty quick what works for you and what doesn't and whether how much sleep you need even and what you need to eat and what you like to eat before each, each, um, each day's racing but yeah you learn to grow in your own skin like even when i started with james courtney as my teammate you just do what he did you know yeah. shake yeah. his setup take his watch his videos and do what he did and then eventually you know which is what happened at the end of the year you start to get to that level and then you're pushing back and doing your own setups and stuff and this year it's worked well because you're pushing off each other but it took a while to get there that last year so now the information goes both ways it's awesome yeah. yeah you really push each other to to you know now i've had to step up and get start to get better it's a good it's a good thing and how long did it take you like personally to feel like you could show up to a race knowing what you needed to do um i have no idea it's been so long <laughs> yeah, yeah true <laughs> yeah i don't know as i said you still feel like you're always learning and getting better and learning more about yourself and what you need but yeah like i guess it took a couple of years to be comfortable and yeah i don't, I don't yeah. really know the answer no, no, it's yeah, fair. it has yeah. been a while like have yeah. you can you feel a shift in yourself like from the dude that rocked up to tassie last yeah. year to the dude that rocked up to tassie this year yeah massively different and it sort of comes down to the prep and that and yeah i feel like i got a good structure now like on my you know the, the week leading up you know with my sleep and everything and all the checklists and that that i go through is so much so much better but it's interesting talking about it like where i am now i feel like i can rock up to a race weekend and it should be the same as the last round that i've been to but you know i got got sort of midway end of the way last year and i'm like am i doing the right thing and you sort of question if if you're taking the right approach to things and 
you know, even just like, I don't drink or do anything. I was like, am I, do I need to be more? Loosen ha- up yeah. Do I yeah. need to loosen up? Do I need to do different stuff? Do I, but ticking over that year, like now I feel, I feel really good and I feel, um, better prepared and just feel like I'm in the right spot. But as Shane said, every time you're getting better and you're always improving and it's been pretty cool to, to see what's happened in the past 18 months. Yeah. And so you mentioned that like you're having to step up because of the way that he's driving. Yep. You could, you could frame that as like a, a, an annoying thing in a sense like they, or there's like a, there's a version of this where the young driver is rating better in the championship at this point yep. than the old a driver you know and that they could go the other way but you seem like you're actually really embracing the yep. like the challenge of it and the obviously it helps that he's a legend but like yeah. it, it, it's <laughs> yeah, a yeah. it's if like he wasn't a, a nice guy it wouldn't <laughs> yeah, be fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> be really hard not to like him yeah. but it's like it seems like you are kind of embracing that a little bit yeah because i think it's the way the culture in our team is like everyone's mm. open every you can see all the setups all our driving stuff we get along good and i've been as open as i can the last year or so trying to help and then this year you know it goes both ways and yeah i've been struggling with this car a bit i guess and especially at darwin on the weekend my friday was a waste of time basically (laughs) so saturday we just bolt his setup in that marty and brock had come up with on the 88 car and you know qualified fifth or whatever it was straight away so yeah as a team you want a strong teammate you obviously the first person you're compared to is your teammate so you want to beat them but you have to work together as well so i'm sure it'll get testy like this car um for example the next race we go to the fueling time is so long on these new cars it's like 20 seconds longer to fill the tank so it's so important to be the first car because there's only one pit boom so you want to be the other guy because if you stack you lose so much time so of course you compete in that regard you have a little battle amongst yourselves to try and get to the front so but that's just how it is but i think you got to focus on as we say all the time you got to beat everyone else before focusing yeah on each on each other and to do that you have to work together well but it can just go so wrong like in in teams you know like it's it can it's it's yeah, not but- it's not always the like you guys are living <laughs> the dream as far as that scenario yeah. goes you know and, but we're always told that, like, even on the races on the weekend, like, we were three or four spots apart on the grid, but we're drilled into us, okay, if we end up battling, work together, don't yeah. fight each other, definitely don't hit each other, and you just, it's just ingrained. It's easy now, J-Dub's not in the car. Yeah, yeah. But he was the boss, he didn't have to listen. <laughs> True, right. Yeah, now, don't hit me, yeah. but I can hit yeah. you. <laughs> but yeah, it works, it works well, but for sure, there's going to be a point where you we are going to clash, but that's, that's part of racing and, you know, the, the team side of it for sure, but we're selfish people. That's, that's part of it. Yeah. But I, I definitely think there is a unique vibe with you boys, you know, like I've definitely been allowed around a lot of races and a lot of, yeah, some dudes teams in, don't look like this. No, nah, yeah. no. Nah. And it, I th- it's cool. And I think it's worth like, I, I definitely think it's worth talking about, you know, cause yeah. it's just, and the, the like energy that you could spend on like the other side if it was the other way it just takes so much yeah, away from yeah. like the actual racing you know yeah well even at stone brothers when i was there we never shared setups we had all the same parts and stuff but everything's hidden and a driver would ask me a question i'd just say i don't know, or just, <laughs> no, no, know it's flat mate don't lift or something you know and whereas now it, it, which is good because you're trying to compare them but you know we didn't win that much so I think it works better this way. Yeah. Yeah. And so how do you guys, like what's best case scenario going forward for this season? Like where where do you think some strong races are going to be? Like are there some strong results looming? Like is there tracks you're excited to get get to? Traditionally, we do get going in this team in the second half of the season. Yeah. And it's street tracks, you know. So there's some strong tracks for us coming up. The enduro season is where our team's always the strongest, like the preparation we do and all the pit stop practice and stuff. Like, yeah, this is where normally we, we start to go pretty good. So the second half of the year will be hopefully pretty strong for us. Man, you could see the stops in Darwin were like yeah, pretty yeah. schmick. Our guys are working so yeah. hard, man. Like Shane's engineer, Andrew's come from BJR, who are the leaders who or have been for quite a while in pit stops. And the practice and the times mm. that the guys are putting out are insane. Like they're two second you know just under three second pit stops and last year we were 
always struggling. We could never really undercut people because they'd be a second or so faster in the pit stops. Yep. But now we're the guys doing the undercutting. So it's, as drivers, obviously that's such an important role and to see them putting in the work, uh, it's it's really cool to see. Yeah, yeah, that, that must feel good when you're driving into the pits. Like there's such a high pressure... Yeah situation and yeah. like to to go in there knowing that the boys have got They're that bit of a dog and just like. feel the confidence from them too and every race they look at the pit order oh we're first and second or yeah. first and third on the speed chart and pits now and that's like a cool feeling for them you know and it's the work they've been putting in like twice a day at the shop working on the rig practicing pit stops with the guy they partnered with it's it's pretty cool yeah yeah and and like when you're in a team scenario it's just all those things that mm. add up, you know, like you, yep. there's no magic bullet in a sense. Yeah. And it's like when you've got a group of guys and girls that come together yep. in that way, it's like they're just in every place they can get time. Well, they're trying to get time. Everything's so close now. All those mm. little things matter. So if you're picking up half a second consistently, like that's free lap time basically yep. easily in the pits. So all that effort they put in, we got the confidence to pit early now and or even cover late a lap later because we know we're not going to lose much time it's it's pretty cool so expectations for you mate for the end of the year we're going to see some we're going to see some saturdays coming here we can <laughs> just suck on you missed a day or well there's there's some big sunday races so hopefully we can <laughs> keep that going yeah but, true, um, maybe just don't yeah. change yeah no it was last weekend was certainly a good one for us like we've been having these awesome races and they happen to be on sundays but the consistency hasn't been there and i think it's they're so close i mean qualifying for Sunday's race, the top four were six hundredths apart and the whole field, the top 20 are within like three and a half tenths. So it's so easy to make one little mistake and, and have such a bad race. So to have a consistent weekend was awesome. That's my goal just moving forward just try and have three solid races. You know, I'd rather try and have, you know, three really good results and a win and a 20th. So yeah. um, as Shane said, our team normally goes well at the tracks and, and the races coming up. So hopefully as a team... I mean, the goal is to be one, two and win the champion team's championship and driver's championship. So hopefully we can be in that position at the end of the year. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, same. same. Just keep scoring points. And seems like we have flown under the radar a bit results wise, but we still just keep scoring points and feels like we're struggling and it's been tough, but we're still there in the fight fourth. And yeah, we've got to try and get one, two and team's championship. That's always the massive priority to have that first pick garage. So. Yeah. yeah, as long as we achieve that, it's a success. Is it kind of nice in a way to not be like the main team or to have people feel like you're struggling when you're sort of not really in the big picture? Like, is it nice yeah. to just not have the target on your back for once? Yeah, it still feels like it. Like, we had a tough day on Friday and it still felt like we were always the attention, which is weird. Like, go and focus on someone else and let us get better. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess sometimes, but... For sure, it's nice to let, you know, you don't let them. Other people are doing well and winning and getting headlines, which is good. You just knuckle down and do your thing. And it feels like we had a tough weekend, but we were one, two for the weekend, a tough weekend on my side and, you know, but still scoring a lot of points. So if it gets better, it'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, boys, that was uh quarterly review number two. I can't Fine. believe that it's already the first like, dude it's actually insane it's nuts, yeah. so yeah hopefully come back we'll hear about oh giz winning some nascar <laughs> races <laughs> he might not come back <laughs> yeah, yeah. no he'll, he'll be back he'll be back he'll, yeah. he'll, he'll be back it's and, too far from home yeah. Yeah. yeah uh and then yeah hopefully mate get get some more get some more wins but um yeah i've been enjoying doing these i'm glad we got to do one in person this time around as well and very good see you in a couple of months perfect we are excited to announce the launch of our new membership site, gypsytales.com, packed with exclusive content and perks that you won't find anywhere else. This is your chance to become a part of the Gypsy Gang. And as a special bonus, if you sign up to an annual membership, you'll be entered into the draw to win our custom-built TC125. Gypsy Gang.